Lord. Welcome to my Torah Sunday School. I give honor to the Holy Spirit of God, to our Bishop Landell, Lady Coronet Landell, Minister Campbell, brethren, friends, everyone that's watching. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for joining me for Sunday School today. Let's just bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come in the precious name of Jesus. Father, we magnify your name. We exalt you. We give you the glory. We thank you for all that you've done for us and all that you continue to do in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us throughout the course of this week. And thank you, Lord, for helping us to overcome every obstacle that we have faced. Thank you for bringing us to Sunday School once more, where we can join together to study your word. As we come, we pray, Lord, that you prepare every heart, open our understanding, reveal yourself to us in a different way today. Let your word dwell in us richly and let it bring forth much fruit in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We're focusing on lesson 1.1 and the topic of our lesson today is the Lord's Prayer. And lesson text is taken from Matthew chapter 6 verses 5 to 18. Our focus verse is Matthew 6, verse 8, and I'll read it in your hearing. Be not you, therefore, like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. The truth about God is God invites us to pray. The truth for my life and yours is I will follow Jesus' pattern of prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just look at the topic of the lesson, the Lord's Prayer. As you know, prayer is a two-way conversation with God. Not only should we speak to him as our loving father and closest friend, we should also take time to listen to what he has to say to us. In Luke 11 verse 1, we read that one of Jesus' disciples asked him, Lord, teach us how to pray as John taught his disciples, they recognized that the awesome things that Jesus did on a daily basis flowed from his intimate prayer life with his heavenly father. And of course, they wanted to be like him. In response, Jesus taught his disciples the Lord's Prayer. In it, he gave clear instructions on the key elements of prayer. In today's lesson, Jesus is at the side of a mountain and he's teaching the multitudes to pray using the Lord's Prayer. It's an important model for us today, especially for those of us who are determined to draw closer to God. Thank you, Jesus. As we meditate upon this lesson together today, I pray that you will be blessed. I must also tell you that I'm videoing on location away from home and there are some peacocks and other birds you are circling around. So I'm letting you know 
just in case you hear them. Praise the Lord. So our lesson objectives today are to understand why we need to pray and how to do it effectively. So we're in the book of Matthew once again, the book that contains Matthew's eyewitness account of Jesus's life and ministry. As you know, Matthew was one of the 12 disciples that Jesus chose for himself. Matthew was originally from Capernaum, the son of Alphaeus, and his previous profession was being a tax collector, a profession which was despised by the Jews. He was called Levi, but after his call to ministry, he changed his name to Matthew. We also know from previous studies that Matthew's gospel was written for Jewish believers. It was written to provide his readers with an eyewitness account of Jesus's life and ministry, and to assure readers that Jesus was the long awaited Messiah foretold by the Old Testament prophets. During the Sermon on the Mount in chapters five to seven of Matthew's gospel, Jesus preached about many topics pertaining to the kingdom of heaven. At the beginning of chapter six, he warned against doing acts of righteousness or good deeds just to be seen by others. He told the crowd, take heed that you do not your arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your father, which is in heaven. Matthew 6, verse 1. Jesus then turned to prayer. At this point in his sermon, Jesus instructed the people how they should pray. In Israel's history, the time between the Old Testament and the New Testament is known as the intertestament period. It covers a period of 400 years. In that time, God had been silent. Israel had been taken over by the Roman Empire. At the beginning of the New Testament, we read of John the Baptist, who called the people to repent in readiness for the coming of the Lord. John told them, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Jesus, the Messiah, had come in the flesh, and as he sat on the side of the mountain, he wanted the people to know that God still hears and answers prayers. He would teach them how to approach their heavenly father and what they ought to say. Let's get into the scripture lesson text. I'm reading from Matthew 6 verse 5. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily, I say unto you, they have their reward. Who then was Jesus speaking about? The word hypocrite comes from the Greek word Hippocrates, meaning an actor or a stage player. Jesus is speaking of those who do things just to be seen or admired by other people. He's referring to the religious leaders of the day, 
the scribes and the Pharisees. There were two main places where the Jews in Jesus' day might pray in a hypocritical manner. They might pray at the synagogue at the time of public prayer or on the streets at the appointed times of prayer. The appointed times of prayer were 9 a.m., noon and 3 p.m., 3 in the afternoon, that is. These hypocrites were not praying because they wanted God to hear them. They just wanted to impress other people. When we pray with the wrong motives, it's an insult to God. Those people have the reward that they were looking for. That is the only reward that they are going to have. God is not impressed. Please don't misunderstand me. There's a time for public prayer in our services, but we must make sure that our prayer is directed to God and not to man. In Psalms 32 verse 6, David said that everyone that is godly should pray. That means it's not an option. David knew the value of prayer in his relationship with God. No wonder he was called the apple of God's eye. Let's read Matthew 6 verse 5. Sorry, verse 6. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in secret, and thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Jesus led by example. We read in the scripture where he went away in a quiet, secluded spot to pray. Matthew 14, verse 23. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went off into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Mark 1. Verse 35 says, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there prayed. Luke 4, verse 42 says, And when it was day, he departed and went into a desert place. The secret place is important. In the morning, we need to commit our day unto God. In the evening, we need to give thanks for the mercies that he has bestowed upon us throughout the day and for all the storms that he has brought us through. Every believer should have a secret place where they can pray. The Greek word room was used for a storeroom where treasures were kept. Somebody said that there are treasures waiting for us in our prayer closet or our prayer room. When we pray in secret, our Father promised to reward us openly with answered prayers. And we know that our God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's read Matthew 6, verses. 7 to 8. Jesus 
Jesus continued to instruct the people saying, but when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think they shall be heard for their much speaking, but not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. In some versions it says, do not babble or use empty words like the pagans. The Bible gives clear examples of pagan babbling. In 1 Kings 18, 26, the prophets of Baal cried out, O Baal, answer us. And you know what? They cried out for half a day. In Acts 19, verse 34, a mob in Ephesus shouted, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians for two hours. They were praying false prayers to false gods. The true and living God is not impressed by the length or eloquence of our prayers. Prayer isn't about the number of words. It's not about the number of words that we can get in. It's about the sincerity of our heart. Jesus was very clear in his instructions. We should not be like the heathens, those who do not know God. One of the most effective prayers that I ever prayed was, help me Lord, I can't handle this right now. So um, I'd just gone back to work after bereavement and those of you who've gone through it, you know that you go to work and you do things, but it's like you're in autopilot. And on the day that I went back, I was told that we were expecting visitors from the local authority and they were coming round to each classroom and they were going to observe us teach. And I wasn't ready for it. I didn't feel like it. I didn't want to see anybody. I just wanted to get in my classroom, close the door and get on with my job. I couldn't go out of the room and pray. So I just sat at my desk and temporarily um, put my head down. And I just said, Lord, I can't handle this right now. I need your help. So I learned that they were coming to me at 11 o'clock. It was quarter past 10. And I was expecting the Lord to just do something on my behalf and I prayed again, Lord, I need your help. I can't deal with this right now. Half past ten. Lord, you said in your word, if I ask, it shall be given. Lord, I'm asking right now. Quarter to eleven. Lord, I need you to show yourself strong on my behalf. Five to eleven. Lord, help me. I need your help, Lord. Two minutes to eleven. The fire alarm just went off. We had to drop everything. We had to come out of the classroom and we all had to assemble in the appointed space. We were there for at least 40 minutes. 
walking out the classroom, I remember thinking, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I was on the playground and I was smiling to myself and the children were saying to me, yes, what's funny? And I said, it's okay, everything's fine. And in my mind, I'm thinking, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So by the time everything was okay and we were told to go back into the classroom, there was no time for the visitors to come to my room. The time had passed and they had to move on and do something else. And I just thank God because I know that he has our best interests at heart. Brethren and friends, through many of our own experiences, we know that we serve a God who hears and answers prayers. In Mark chapter 1, a leper approached Jesus, beseeching him and kneeling down to him and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou can make me clean. Mark 1 verse 40, Jesus had compassion on the leper. He touched him and said to him, I will be thou clean. Mark 1, 41. Immediately, the leprosy left him. Jesus restored to the man his health and his identity. He was no longer just a leper. Jesus had answered his prayer. When we pray, we must pray with expectation with expectation that God will hear and answer our prayer. God knows what we need, even before we ask him. Sometimes the answer will come swiftly. Sometimes we have to wait. When God doesn't respond in the way that we would expect him to, we must understand that he sees what we can't see and he's still working in our favour. In his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus provided us with a pattern for prayer to help us to pray effectively. This pattern is commonly known as the Lord's Prayer. Jesus taught them and after this manner, therefore pray you. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Sometimes people pray this prayer as it is written. Jesus appeared to use it as a template or a pattern to teach us how to pray rather than just as words to repeat. So what elements should we include in our prayers. The Lord's Prayer contains six petitions or prayer points. Three are concerned with the holiness and will of God, and three are concerned with our personal needs. It starts with adoration. Hallowed be your name. Followed by consecration. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Then supplication. Give us today our daily bread, followed by intercession. Forgive us our debts 
as we forgive our debtors. So forgive us as we forgive those who trespassed or sinned against us. Then there is protection. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Keep us safe. Finally, our highest reverence and respect. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord's Prayer is brief, but it doesn't mean that when we pray, we have to be brief about the things that concern us. Some situations are more complicated than others. We do need to make sure that we pray in line with God's word, though. We must pray in faith without wavering. James 1, 6 to 8 reminds us, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. Let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. And that is the New King James Version. When we pray, we must submit our will, our plans, and our needs to God. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows what we need. He is able to supply those needs. Our needs are different from our wants. If God sees that there are things that we want, which are not good for us, he will not supply them. If we are asking for things with the wrong motives, we won't get them either. Jesus taught us to pray, thy will be done, so that we would ask God for things with the right motives. So, why should we pray, thy kingdom come? We must never underestimate the importance of praying, thy kingdom come. When we do so, we are expressing our longing for Christ's return. We are also expressing our desire to see God's kingdom broadened and established throughout this world right now. As God's children, we must make sure that King Jesus has dominion over our lives. Pray, thy kingdom come, means asking our Heavenly Father to help us to be faithful, obedient, authentic, and effective Christians. It also means praying for our unsaved family members, our friends, and co-workers to be saved by God's grace and become citizens of his kingdom here on earth. The Lord's Prayer also deals with our relationship with each other. Forgiveness is not an option. It is a necessity. Some of you may be thinking, but you don't know what they did to me. You're right. I don't know what God does. You may be a victim of physical or verbal abuse. You may have been abandoned or neglected. You may have been lied to or cheated on. You may have been hurt by your parents, your siblings, or even brothers and sisters in the church. But God commands you to forgive. 
We read in John 4, verse, verses 20 to 21. If a man says, I love God and hate his brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God, who he has not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God, loveth his brother also. So, there we have it. When you forgive, and turn the situation over to the Lord. He will heal your hurt. It may not happen overnight, but it will happen. Harboring unforgiveness is more harm to us than we realize. Matthew 6, 14 to 15 tells us plainly, if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive your trespasses. Brethren and friends, we can't allow bitterness to take root in our hearts. One of the most difficult but powerful prayers that we can pray is, Lord, forgive them. Or Lord, I forgive them. Let us purpose in our hearts. I will forgive and show mercy to others. If we don't show mercy, how can we expect our Heavenly Father to show mercy on us? Brethren and friends, take a moment right now. Think of anyone that you need to forgive. Do it right now. Pause the video if you need to. It's not me that's commanding it. The Lord commands it. Ask God to give you grace not to think about that situation anymore. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for everyone who is forgiving right now. I thank you for everyone who's releasing their burden right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Brethren and friends, thank you for joining me for Sunday School today. I hope that you've learned something from it. Looking forward to next week, it will be District 5 Convocation, so there will be no Mount Horeb Sunday School until Sunday the 16th of June. Until then, God bless you, God keep you, and may continually cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Have an awesome week as you stay in God's word.